So here we are in Scratch. I'm going to model my thought processes as I attempt to create a, an algorithm to, to help us solve the problem of summing up the numbers from 1 to a given value. Okay, so I'm going to model my thought process as I try and create the algorithm. I might make mistakes and I'll leave the mistakes in the video, um, but we'll see how we get on. So the first thing we want is we want the this program, this algorithm to respond, in my case, when I click on the flag. So we'll leave that there. So thinking this through, I I need the cat, I need Scratch to, to ask us a about how far we want to go to so to sum from where to where so i'm going to get the cat to to ask me something okay and then wait for me to to provide that input so the first thing i'm going to ask it to say is sum up to what value okay so at that point it's going to pause and it's going to ask me to sum up let's say in my case to five or to ten but now I need it to do something with that number because I don't have it. It's the computer, isn't it? It's an algorithm. I don't have a pen and paper to write this down. I need the computer to store this somewhere. So in computer speak, we call those variables. So I'm actually going to make a new variable and I'm going to call it sum2, which is where I want to sum up to. Okay, so I've asked what do I want to sum up to, and now I'm going to set sum to, to well actually to the answer for that question. And Scratch has that in here in sensing, and I can just drag across the answer. So now when I run this, it will ask for value, and it will store that as an answer in this little bit of memory that it calls answer. It's kind of like me writing down a piece of paper. But if you remember from the conversation we had um, in the inset, I, I need a, a running total, if you like. So I need another variable, which I'm going to call, I'm going to call sum of, okay? And I need to set that to zero when we start. I need to reset the running total. And now I need to know which number that I am adding up. So say I go from 1 to 5 or 1 to 10 or whatever, I need to know where I am. I almost need a, a counter. So I'm going to create another thing which I'm just going to call i, and quite traditionally in computer science i is this thing that posh word we iterate over, we count over, we use it as a counter. So I'm going to set i, actually I'm going to start that at 1. All my counting starts at 1. If I add from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4, Actually, there's no point in starting at zero, because if I start at zero, adding zero to the value still produces zero as the output. So I may as well save a calculation and always start at one. So now I've got how far I'm going to add up to, let's say five, and I've got a starting number of one. So I've got the start and the end points. Now I need to go around some calculations adding these things together to get the answers I want. So what I want is a, a repeat loop. I want to keep on going around doing the same thing until I get to a certain point. So I'm going to drag across a repeat until. Okay. So let's not worry about when I'm going to stop at this point, but let's just think about what we're going to do. We're going to take the current number and we're going to add it to this thing called sum of, which is the running total. So I'm going to drag across set and I'm going to change that to sum of. And now I want to change it to actually to its value, to its current value. I want to add the value of I, this pointer. I is going to go one, two, three, four, five. And I need to keep on adding this to sum of. OK. So if it over here, I drag across sum of, I'm going to add it to itself, but I'm going to add i to it. So every time I go around this loop, I'm taking the value of whatever that kind of running total is, 
and I'm adding to itself the next value i. So I'm creating this idea of a running total always moving. So when I've added that number on, the next thing I need to do is I need to make i bigger by 1. Because I need to start at 1, perform the sum, perform the calculation, and then I need to move i along 1 so that it adds 1 to i. So the next time I perform the calculation, it's actually adding 2, and then adding 3, and then adding 4, and so on. So that kind of works so far, but I now need a an exit clause, which is when do I stop? Okay, so when I start this off, I'm starting at one, and then it goes through the loop here, and then it now makes that two, and then it repeats round, and then adds two, then it adds three, then it adds four, then it adds five, and it's only when it's completed and it's added the fifth point, it moves on to this next one and it makes it six, which I don't want. So I actually want to repeat this loop until actually it's one more than how far I want to go. OK, so if I drag across into here that I is in here, we're saying compare i and it's going to be when i is equal to the the sum to value that we said that's gone wrong that we're going to drag across in that into there and i is the sum to value that's the thing i don't want that can go added to one more so what that means is my exit clause is going to exit this loop that's going round and round forever until the value of i, this counter, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, when i becomes 6, so it's gone beyond what I want it to be, I want to stop this loop, I don't want to move on and add it, I want to exit at that point, so it's the highest value plus one more, I want to finish that loop. At that point we're finished, and then I can actually get this to say the answer and in here I'm going to then get it to say the total thing which is sum of. So there we go if I if I run this now the cat will ask me to sum up to what value so let's sum up to five so we're adding one two three four and five together click on the tick and there we go, it's going wrong, it's maxing out, sums are going round and round in circles, somehow this isn't working. So somewhere in here, I've got a mistake in my logic and my thought processes, which is good, because our young people, our children, have got to actually diagnose what's going wrong here, somewhere. So let's see what's happening. We click it, we take a value, set sum two to answer that's correct set sum of to zero set i to one that's all seems fine repeat until i equals sum two plus one which is one more than it should be that seems fine set the sum of to the sum of plus i so we're adding the next value all the time set i to one right there's the mistake isn't it we are constantly setting i back to one so this is going add one to one to one. This line here, set i to one, is just flatly wrong. I need to add one to i. So this line here needs to come out, and instead of set i to one, I need to change i by one. Yeah, I need to take the value of i and change it by one, increase it by one. So now if I run this, let's see what happens. The cat asks me what value to sum up to. Let's say 5. So it should go 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. And give me the answer of 15, which is absolutely correct. So the beauty of an algorithm, not only the thinking about it and the thought processes and making the mistakes, but obviously from a, from a young person's perspective, what if I now wanted to add up to 100 so 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 
all the way up to 100. Now I've created this algorithm, the answer becomes quite simple. In a similar ma manner, I could make that what happens if I add up to 100,000. And there's the answer. So whilst we put some effort up front into creating the algorithm and the program, once we've got that program, we're able to extend it to calculate the answer to many problems. So here is a blank piece of Python code, which is a really useful site to investigate called replit.com because it's free, you don't need to install Python, and it allows you to, to play with Python in a really quite simple way. So for the Python code, similar to how we started before, we're just going to try and replicate the thought process in some way, shape or form. Okay. Doing and coding in Python requires you to know the words or the syntax, the commands to type. So face value, it seems more complicated to program in Python because you've got to know the codes and the words to use. It's like speaking a foreign language. You have to know the language to be able to program the language and then you need a dictionary and you need to spend some time familiarizing yourself. But actually, it's not that complicated. And I know that's famous last words when people say that, but actually it's not overly complicated. So in Python, we want to, we want to get the computer to take some input from us. Okay. So I could just issue the command input and then gives you a bit of a prompt actually. So input enter number to sum two. Dot dot. Okay, and as a piece of Python code, if I was to run that at this point, it asks me for a number which I can type in, I press return, and then the program enters, ends, sorry. So it doesn't do a great deal, but clearly it's asked me for some input. What I want to do though, is I want to go back to my code, and I want to capture that input into a variable, just like we did in Scratch. So just like we did in Scratch, I'm going to call that sum2, and I'm going to say sum2 equals that input. Okay. So I've now captured that input into a variable called sum2. I also had this idea of the running total of sum of, so I'm going to say sum of equals zero. Okay. And now we're we're beginning to get to the point where we can implement this um, piece of code. And in Scratch, we used a repeat until loop. In Python, we're going to use what I, is a for loop. Okay. So this is where we're going to say for, in this case, we're going to use i again as the pointer for i in range. And it's just a different script in Python. And we're going to say, where we want the range to start and where we want the range to stop. So we want it to start at 1 and we want it to go all the way up to this sum 2. But just like in Scratch, it will stop when it reaches that value so it won't execute the code underneath. So what we need to do is we need to go 1 beyond that. So I'm going to go sum 2 plus 1. And just because it's the way you do it in Python, you have to end that with a semicolon. Press return. Now we need to type what we want the code to do. So what we want the code to do is we want to take the, the current value of sum of, and to that value, we want to say the current value of sum of equals, the new value, sorry, of sum of equals, the current value of sum of plus, I. Just like we did in Scratch, there's no difference here. The difference is that the, the, the for loop takes care of some of the things that were in the repeat until loop. So that loop will go round and round in circles. I will start off at 1 and then it'll add 1 to sum of and then it'll add 2 to sum of because every time it goes round that loop, I will be incremented by 1 automatically because that's just the way Python works. So when that finishes, when that loop finishes, 
we're in a position to print this thing, which is sum of, which will be the final total. Okay. Now I'm going to run this, but I know it's not going to work because I know there's a mistake, but I just want to show you what will happen. So if I run this, it will say enter a number. So I'll sum up to five because we know the answer is 15. Okay. And at this point it's crashed. And it looks like some scary red words, but really it says type error can only concatenate str, not int. And kind of it's a cryptic message, but it's all to do with the very first line here where it says sum2 equals input. When we capture input, it captures it as text. So instead of it viewing the number five as the number five, it's actually viewed it as a, a piece of text, no different than the letter A, B, C, or D. So I need to force Python to turn that into a number. And the way I do it is I wrap that input statement round an INT. INT stands for integer. So I want to convert that into an integer. So if I run it now and sum to five, it tells me my answer is 15. Again, if I run it again, and answer 100 tells me the answer is 5050. The beauty of Scratch is that it allows children maybe to drag and drop and explore their coding that way. The beauty of Python is once you know and you've learned the language, if you like, once you, you, you're familiar with print and input and integers, the syntax, it's actually much quicker to code a solution than it is actually in Scratch. And actually the coding of a Python solution looks more like the algorithm that you created maybe on paper than the algorithm that you might have enacted in Scratch. We can write this at many levels. We can write it in Scratch. We could use J2E, J2E code, which takes Scratch and converts it into JavaScript. But on a personal level, and it is really only personal, I find the JavaScript that's generated more complicated, much more complicated than the Python that we've just created. It's more of a, JavaScript is more verbose, it's more wordy, and children tend to find it, in my opinion, more complicated. So by way of conclusion, that was taking our learning objectives and actually creating a bit of code around them.